Hey, how y'all doing out there? This is hey. Pastor Kelly, Pastor Dolly. How you doing? I'm doing great. Good. Good to be back with y'all. We're going to keep going on. I, we're calling it self-image, but I need to quit calling it that because self-image is about as helpful as self-righteousness. Right. I'm not righteous because of anything that I'm doing. I'm righteous because God has given me righteousness through faith in Jesus Christ. Right. The image that I have, I, I'm not creating that. I need to, I need to be received the cre the image that He created we're me to be. Yeah, we're, I'm figuring out who, who I really am. Right. And so it's, it's we call it self image, but it's really God's image on us. Yeah. It's, we were created in His image, and so we want to right. see that. Yeah. Why is that important? Because <clears throat> the world. You know, I, I do a teaching. If you don't know who you are, there's a line of people ready to tell you who you are, and they're going to tell you who you are based on how you can help them. Right. You know, the the world, uh, your family, we all want. You know, here's we we want to put you in a box. Right. And if I'm gonna be in a box, I'm gonna be in God's box. Yeah. I want to be what He called me to be, and and it's going to be His part. Amen. So we've been looking at image. In the last video, we talked, you know, we, we need to get the knowledge. He tells us to get renewed, renew our minds, mm -hmm. work out our, our new man, put off the old man, and move forward in the new man that was created in the image of him. Right. And so that's what we want to do. And I mentioned that how you see God is important <clears throat> to how you see you. It's a direct correlation. It is. And how you see you is how you see him sometimes. You know, before I got into church, all the stories that I'd heard about God, I had heard about him, I didn't know him. Right. So all, this, all the stories I'd heard about him, he was this, you know, this judge. He would punish evil and, and reward good and this and that, but nobody could be good. You know, they kind of threw that in. He, God punishes bad things and gives good stuff to good things, but you really can't do good. Right. So you just expect him to be punished all the time. So when I first got into church, my idea of a God was I was going before the judge because right. I was a sinner. Right. If I was a sinner, that makes him the judge. And then I got saved. And they said, okay, you know, God's your buddy now. <clears throat> and it's like, well, I want to I wanna work off my debt. You know, I got all that bad I did, I got to fix. I that, yeah. So I, I became a servant. I wasn't a sinner anymore, according to the people that, you know, so now I'm a servant. Right. Okay, well, that makes him my master. That's right. And it still wasn't the relationship God was looking it for. It was better. So it was better. But not quite better. But it fair. was still based on works. Right. And then I got to reading this New Testament, and it says that he's my father. Yes. And when I started seeing him as a father, I became his child. And, and it, so that's what we're that's what we're shooting for. And I think there's even one better because Enoch, Enoch, yeah, <laughs> Enoch got to walking with God, and he just he just went on. But yeah. that's another that's another video. So how you see you and how you see God are are, are tied together. And I'll show you real quick. Yeah. In Romans chapter uh, chapter one, in Romans, verse twenty one. He says, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. You know, they, 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 they kind of knew him, but they didn't give him the due honor and reverence. That's what I think. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's For years, like, yeah. you felt like you knew God, but you really didn't. Yeah. I, I used to actually think that, why do I have to go to heaven and just sit around and worship him all day long? That's me not giving him due honor because I did not understand. I thought we were all just have to go up there and tell yeah. him how wonderful he is all day long. <laughs> and then one day I heard a sermon talking about, you know, he has an innumerable company of angels. You can't count them. And they're all up in heaven praising him and glorifying him right now. He doesn't need us to do that. If I do that, it benefits me. Right. We get to worship God. Yeah. That's the thing that I, my brain couldn't wrap around. I had always just. Yeah, you don't that. have to do anything. You, do you not. have the opportunity and to, if you and take it's a that good opportunity, one. It yeah. benefits you. And so it does. It's very important. He says in verse 20, he says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. And their their heart their foolish heart was darkened. So you get to think of something wrong, and something wrong gets in your heart, and then something wrong comes out of your mouth. Yeah. 
Profess that, that creates your world. Yeah. Yeah. Your Professing world. themselves to be wise, they became fools. Verse 23, and changed, wow. if they changed it, then he was something else. They changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. They took God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth and everything you see, and brought him down into their world, into an image that they can, they can handle and manipulate. Mm -hmm when that don't work. So they changed his image, amen? Right. Well, then over in Psalms, it's probably what he's talking about here in Romans, but he taught the story over in Psalms 106, David's kind of giving a recap of what the children of Israel went through from the time they came out of Egypt right. and went on their little wilderness, wilderness journey. In Psalms 106, <clears throat> Verse 19, he says, They made a calf in Oreb and worshipped the molten, molten image, worshipped the molten image. They took all the gold and silver and stuff they had on them at the time because they came out of Egypt with all the spoil. Yeah, they did, they well, they well. pulled all that stuff together, their provision mm -hmm. for their journey, and they built this big golden calf so they could worship that right. instead of the God that just did nine plagues, ten plagues, and everything he did to get them out. Yeah. And they made this calf. And in verse 20, it says, Thus they changed their glory into wow. the similitude or the similarity of an ox that eateth grass. That is so powerful. They forgot God, their Savior. When we give our worship to something other than God, yeah. you're going to change your, your image into the thing you worship. That's the thing. And we, we think, well, I've never taken all my gold and melted it down and made me an idol right. to sit around and worship. I don't go buy me some statue and sit around and worship it. I don't do this and I do that. But, you know, we do things like um, take our money and put it in an account and we worship it. Like we've got all of our answers are settled because we've got this big bank balance. Or we, you know, we put all Materials. of our hope in, in a person. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And well, as long as this person's on my team, my world's going to be great. I'm going to be, this is going to be. We do the same thing um, in so many different areas of our life. But it, well, as we do that, anytime we start worshiping something else and putting our faith and hope and confidence in them, we literally bring our God down to this level. When God is so much more, we are limiting ourselves. We're, we're stopping God We're putting him in a box. We are totally putting him in a box. Yeah. And it's detrimental to us. It is. And, and we do it all the time. People do it all the time. That's why you have to worry about things. And that's that's one of the reasons you have to tithe. Because well, money is one yeah, of those things that is so those... alluring to be to think you've got it all made now that you got some money. Yeah. That money could be gone tomorrow. Yeah, like money, money won't buy happiness. I mean, they, well, all they, the things, I've heard people say, right. yeah, but have you ever seen yeah. somebody frowning on jet ski? Yeah, it'll buy well, a boat. Right? Yeah, you yeah, know but, what? But it won't answer your your relationship. I don't want I don't want a worldly happiness. I want an inner peace. I want that. And, I want that. Yeah. And I want the money, too. I do, too. And, and Jesus' name is yeah. all mine because I, I am a tiger. God can trust me with it. But that's not, that's not my God. That's not my God. Right. Yeah. So, you know... It, how you see yourself is so dependent on how you see him, and you got to get a true picture of him. Which the church has been, yeah, I give them yeah, mediocre, but we're and, and we're I know, but in the past, just mediocre yeah. in how the, the the nature of God. Right. God's not just mushing sinners and snatching your loved ones to heaven because it was their time. It's yeah, God is so much more than that. Yeah. And his true nature, he loves everybody. God is not in the death business. He's in the life business. That's right. And he's not in the taking business. He's in the giving business. That is the truth. And all the things, he's, he's, these wrong ideas that we have, we'll keep going down. We're, we're still on Psalm 106. So they forgot God in verse 21. They changed their image when they made that calf. They forgot God, their Savior, which had done great things in Egypt, wondrous works in the land of Ham, and terrible things at the Red Sea. These are not terrible, bad things to his people. Terrible, I mean, signs and wonders. Yeah. Miracles. Big, big stuff. Verse 24, therefore, God said he would destroy them. Had not Moses, his chosen, stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath. Lest he you go back and look at that story. God got so, so 
upset with the children and, and, and their, their silliness, mm -hmm. he said, you know what? I'm just going to start over. <laughs> and Abraham said... He does have the ability to do that if he wants right, to. Abraham, Moses, Moses had a close enough relationship with God and knew the character of God well enough to know, that don't sound like you. Right. Maybe God's having a bad day today, you know? Maybe he's sitting there. You, God, you're not, you didn't bring them all out with all those miracles and things you just did. You didn't bring them out here in the middle of the desert to stamp them out so that the rest of the world could laugh right. and make fun of your people. He said, you know, that's not your nature. That's not. And so God changed his mind. Can you imagine having a relationship with God so so well that when somebody says something, you know, we do it in the world. Well, you know, it's actually going to happen. It has. It's happened numerous. But somebody, you know, what they always say in the South, what's the quickest way to start a fight in the South? You know, you think you're better than me. But another one is, you say something about my mama? Don't you know, even if, you know, yeah, you don't do that. But I've heard people say things about family members or something like that. And you're like, mm, yeah, that don't sound right. Right. Your kid did this. Mm, that, uh, no, that really. I mean, if you were I mean, to say my possible. kid did this, I would believe it's it. It's possible, did. but it'd be out of her nature. Right. It's possible. Anything's possible, but that would go contrary to the nature that I've seen in her from, you know, oh, or wow. her or him. Right. And so that was what Moses did here. God said something, and Moses was like, "What? Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Yeah. You can get to. You can have an image of him so ingrained with yours." That even when he says, uh, you know, and, and so that, and it turned around. How, how many times must God just all day long when we walk around as his children, I'm poor and I'm sick and I'm this and I'm that. And God's sitting up there going, no, you're not. <laughs> yeah. No, you're not really. You're made in my image. You're selling yourself short. And we got to stop doing that yeah. because how we see him is how we see us. Yeah. You know, I'm just sitting here thinking, you know, Jesus prayed for us. He literally prayed for us and said, God, don't take them out of this world. Jesus prayed that. And so I believe with everything in me that it's the will of God that we stay here. And yeah. I feel like when he was just saying that a minute ago, I thought, you know what? That's like a prayer partner. Moses was like the great prayer partner. Moses intervened for the people, even though he knew that God could just do this. And had the right to do it. You know what I'm saying? But he said, you know, God, you know, if this happens, you know, we, I just really wish we could do this. I wish we could, you know what I'm saying? And God said, okay. So God allowed it to continue because somebody stood in the gap. And I'm, I was just thinking when you were reading that, I'm thinking, my gosh, we've got to stand in the gap. You know, when you see somebody doing something that you despise, they were doing stuff that Moses did not approve of either. No. But instead of just condemning them, going, God, get them, smite them up. Because I used to pray like that. I did. But now, you know, when you see somebody doing something, you should be intervening. God, I know you have mercy. I know you have compassion. I know, Father God, that you can do something about this situation without, you know, wiping out the earth. Because it's looking like the end of times here in a lot of areas. Just... But I'm believing, God, that we've got generations to go yeah. still. I'm believing. And the church is going to be victorious, and I'm, I'm, you know, it, it's going to happen. It, yeah. You know, when, 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 when everybody gets to the point, when we don't know what else to do. God does. That's right. It's never over. It's never it's too late. Absolutely it's never, never over for him. You've never gone too far. You've never done something too big, too bad. Our God is. Even if you repeatedly do something, you know, the Apostle Paul said, "There's things I wish I didn't do, and I do them." And there's things I, I, I want to do, do that I'm supposed to do, but I just don't ever do them. He said, oh, there's a war going off inside of me. You know, because you've got this fallen nature. You've got this unrenewed mind. But your spirit man wants to serve God, wants to obey God, wants to do right. And then you find yourself doing something crazy over here. And uh, I just want to, I don't encourage you. If you, if you don't <clears> have a personal relationship with the Lord, um, just call on the name of the Lord. Say, Lord Jesus, save me. I ask you to forgive me. And from that moment on, start seeking to find out who God is. Look for his image. Find his image. Yeah. And that will be yours. And that will be powerful and Amen. freedom in your own life. Praise God. Good to be with y'all. Y'all be good. We'll see you soon. Amen.